Welcome to the Emporium Outdoors, my name is Michael and in this video we're out for an overnight camp and some trout fishing on the Old Mountain River in southern Alberta. On this trip we had a bit of a challenge trying to find a good camping spot close to the river. Eventually, after exploring a few dead ends and a few bad campsites, we found one that was suitable for our needs. Welcome to the Emporium Outdoors. My name is Michael, and today we're camping with my wife Toby, Simon, somewhere over there, and Esme is in a cool spot. We've just sat up by the Old Man River in southern Alberta, and we're going to be here for a couple of days doing some fly fishing. But first things first, let's get the camp set up. I've opted to bring with me the Teton Vista One. This is a really great option if you have pets with you. The dogs love camping in here with me and it's very comfortable for all of us. So this is my first choice for this trip. So I also recently picked up a couple of things from Cabela's and it was these hydro pack balls. So they're just kind of a rubberized container. This is a two liter and I have a three liter. The reason I selected these is because of this thread. And this is a Kaiden B free filter. And in theory, this should screw right in. So the idea is I can now go scoop from the river, replenish this and then safely drink it. I can figure out how the top works. It's a screw top. Oop. It should be a pop top. Okay so it just has a little retainer on that. So now that should be free to drink. It's a pretty good flow. So let's go down to the river and get this thing filled up.
so that's my boat filled up. Yeah, it certainly works. It's got pretty good flow as well through the filter, so that's going to be very useful. So we are using the Blue Yeti for the first time out in the bush. Very excited to see how it's going to work. It's currently pulling in about 48 watts from the solar panel. Time is after 4.30, so it's not the strongest of sun. And I've just got my little GPS on charge. Great thing with this system is for my mobile phone, I can just place it on the top and I've got that wireless charging as well, which I really like. That's a great feature. So I've got this coupled up to my Jackery panel. That I did put some NC4 connectors on and uh, we're not in perfect good sunlight right there, but it's pretty good and we have pretty close to a full charge and not much going out so 56 watts in and looks like two watts out so we'll see how this fares over the weekend hammock camping is one of my favorite ways to camp when I'm in the hammock, I feel very connected to nature. I can see everywhere around me, I can feel the changes in the temperature, and I can smell the wonderful scents of the forest. I find them very comfortable to sleep in, and they're extremely lightweight and easy to pack. The hammock itself tends not to be the most expensive part of this setup. In order to have a good night's sleep, you need a good underquilt or a mat to go inside the hammock. The underquilt stops the cold air stripping the heat away from your body when it's laid against the fabric of the hammock. Underquilts tend to be the best solution for solving this problem. It creates a nice pocket of warm air that will keep you warm all through the night. I also prefer using a top quilt rather than a sleeping bag in most cases. A top quilt is more like a blanket than it is a sleeping bag, but it's much more easy to get in and out of when you're inside the hammock, and it's much more compact than a full sleeping bag. So I weigh about 210 pounds at the moment. I think this is rated to about 300, I think. Um, but we'll see if that kind of stretch comes out of it and it settles down. But it's a very comfortable hammock. I do like it. Uh, these clips, pretty good. However, they're just like a hook. So this bag just hooks onto that. It would be much better if it's actually a full clip because I could see this getting knocked off in the night and one side getting kind of pinged off like that. I found if you put it on and then kind of pull it tight, it's less likely. On the back, it's a nice mesh. So you put your steeping torch or you know your phone or whatever in there. Yeah, it's a very well-made hammock. I actually like it quite a lot. Uh, the inclusion of this cover so you can actually zip this all the way in and this acts to seal in the heat which and obviously the clips actually hold this up off you so you have a bit of room but this is genius i love it my favorite hammock the war bonnet el dorado you can buy a replacement top so you basically unzip this and you can zip one of those on top so it's a separate thing. Uh, with this the net is actually fixed so you can't take this all the way off. You can obviously put it back and there is a ridge line which is very important. Uh, but overall, not a bad hammock for the money. But we'll see how we do tonight in it. This is a symmetrical hammock. So basically you lie directly along the line of the hammock. Uh, asymmetrical hammocks is you lie diagonally, which gives you a much flatter lie. In a hammock like this, you're more kind of like a banana. 
but with it asymmetrical you kind of lie this way which allows you to uh, actually lie much flatter it's a bit of a preference to some degree but the more expensive hammocks tend to be asymmetrical but the materials are very good stitching is excellent and uh, like I say there's some really good features in this that you wouldn't get even on the uh, higher end type of hammock so but proof of the pudding is in the eating so once we've spent a night in this thing I'll have a much better opinion so as an underquilt to this hammock I've got my Eno Vulcan which I'm going to be using which is a synthetic undercooked Let's figure out which way around it goes So one simple problem you get with a hammock, you can't unzip on both sides to get rid of the, the netting, is you can't adjust the underquilt when you're in it. So you're constantly having to kind of reach over the back and kind of like get it into place. With my war bonnet as a comparison, which you normally see me use, uh, the Wookiee underquilt is fitted. So you clip it on and it's perfect every time. It's designed for that hammock. This is a generic. So there are some adjustments that can be made to move it up and down, etc. But see how we how we do. So Toby's decided she's going to take the hammock tonight, and I'm going to take the Teton Vista one. So we'll have to see what she thinks in the morning, how it's going to work out. How comfortable is it? Very. It's sweet. I'm very happy. I'm very comfortable. What I didn't tell her is I put a huge spider in there just before she got in. So we're just wrapping up the first night. It's about nine o'clock. I'm just waiting for the meteor shower to start, which should be tonight. I might set up a time lapse, not sure yet. It's meant to be peaking either tonight or tomorrow night. But Toby's comfortably set up in the hammock and uh, she's only complained slightly. We need to come bring things to her and the usual. The dogs are in the Teton and they're very comfortable. And that's where we're gonna to sleep tonight. But getting a little bit tired, uh, but it's been a very fun day. Tomorrow's going to be lots of fishing, hopefully, and I'm um, looking forward to that. And um, we're going to fish our way up the river, just by the side of us. You can probably hear it in the background, but it's going to be fun. So I'll say good night for now, and I will see you in the morning. So another good night in the Teton. It's just gone seven o'clock and it's a little bit chilly this morning. A bit of uh, condensation on a few things because uh, we are in the mountains and it's going to warm up pretty quick, I think. So I think I'm going to lie here for a moment, enjoy it. And then I'm going to get up and get some coffee. 
Haven't heard anything from Toby's hammock yet. So she's probably still asleep. So this is the Jetlink satellite burner and attaches to the additional Jetlink port on the stove. This only works with a jet oil cup. I would not have bought it if I had known that. So I have my one tigress folding stove. Let's see if these work. Well, that works.
So I also picked up the Seat Summit X-Pot series. So this is the flexible or foldable kettle. Already had the cup and I bought a second cup and also this, this pan. So there are a few drawbacks to this type of pot. You can't put them over a, an open flame. It has to be a camp type flame, like a camp and stuff like this. But they are pretty good for portability and they do collapse down to a small space. I just have a little drainer in the top. It's kind of a metal bottom with a silicone sides. And you can lock the top. These little flip over wings that go in there. Put it all together. So the kettle does stack inside the pot and the cups two cups stack inside the kettle so you've got two cups a kettle and a large pot and then I just have these MSR plates I've had forever that we can use as uh, regular plates and obviously you've got the frame pan that comes with the half-gen stove right, it's coming together I'm gonna have to figure out something for that dual side satellite stove it's not very happy that you have to use a jet boil pot because they're big and bulky and the whole point was to keep everything small and collapsible so when I get home I'll probably fabricate something that that'll take care of that problem so we've got the morning sun come up we've got the two panels for the 100 watts from the Jackery panel I converted and the Blue Yeti has been running the refrigerator all night I've been charging lots of stuff up today I've got my Insta One X2 Insta 368 One X2 and my phone is actually on the wireless charger which I love that feature and we're pulling in 61 watts it's hard to tell what level the uh, the Bluetti is at because those bars are pretty generic so I'm not sure it's at kind of 79 or 80 it was pretty high earlier but we should be able to get it all the way up to 100% I think like I say we've been charging iPads, cameras keeping the fridge going all night and we're still doing great so, uh, so, so far so good My wife even used the Blue Etty EB55 to blow dry her hair even though we couldn't put it on the full heat half heat worked fine So for the next hour I taught my wife the basics of fly fishing, however it really felt more like days. Toby's the sort of person that would prefer to take advice from a stranger rather than me. Despite these challenges she got the hang of it really well and by the end of the session she was casting proficiently enough to fly fish on the river.
shoes. <laughs> oh, what my hand out. hurt. Is it out? Oh, yeah. it's okay. See, four inches. Can pick him up? No. I just want to see what kind of fish it is. Let's see. I don't know what that is. Does he have the red mark in the chin? Yeah. Mm. Could be a little cutthroat. Okay. I'll let him go. Okay. Go, 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 go. Hey, caught a fish! Yeah. I caught him on this. Yeah, a little dry fly. So we got ourselves a little fish. Little guy, probably four, maybe five inches. If you can see that. Get him back in the water. See him? Where's he out? What is he? Uh, I don't know how to hold him properly. So do you want to do it? Yeah, you hold the camera. Okay. Hold your hands. Just gently hold him. Well, but they're slippery. Yeah, I know. Thank you, honey. You can see the markings under his chin. Yeah. He's so pretty. He's got the forked tail. Yeah. And more spots towards the rear. So this is a. I want to cut through. I can't remember the, the exact name of him. That's a reasonable size. My third size. fish. First, honey. What's not like? So it's yeah, let like the let the fish go. There you go. So soon enough it was time enough to pack up the rest of the camp, which went pretty quickly to be honest. We all very much enjoyed the trip and I think the dogs enjoyed playing in the river and Toby did a really good job of picking up the fly fishing and even beat me 3 to 1 on the count of fish. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and until next time, take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.